Hey everybody, so this What Sold video is going to include an item, as mentioned in my thumbnail, an item from um, that we talked about, Mr. Pishposh and I talked about in this video, uh, about our thrifting challenge that we tried to do and how it didn't go quite as expected, but then we found some really interesting things. So one of the items in that video sold, and so we're going to get to that in a minute. We are starting with some sales that happened on eBay. This is the week of like April 22nd through the 28th. So finishing up April. And we're starting off with something basic, just this vintage enamel cast iron napkin holder. You know, this is something I see stuff like this at thrift stores all the time. Uh, Mr. Pishposh, I think picked it up at the bins one day, our little clearance center. And, you know, it's something honestly that I, you know, not big money. It did sell for $12.99 plus shipping. Um, it's one of those things like I would end up bringing it home and I'd be like, eh, it's not worth that much, I'll, but I'll list it eventually. And and then I would never list it <laughs> because other things would take priority. Whereas Mr. Pishposh is pretty good about just like slamming some listings out. And so he got it listed and it it sold, I don't know, a few months so $12.99, somebody wanted that cast iron napkin holder. Next item on eBay was just this little uh, lapel clip. I'm sure it's also a tie clip. It would just be for a very skinny tie. Um, I noticed Mr. Pishposh didn't even put the word tie in there. Maybe he thought it was too skinny. I don't know. Um, anyway, just a little clip for the Ford Company. And we took an offer for $15 for that. I don't even remember where we picked it up. It's been kind of floating around for a while. I think it was, you know, it might have been at the bin, at the clearance center. I'm not sure. Someplace like that. Or a yard sale, like in a jewelry lot or something. This actually sold pretty quickly. Um, this is a, called a Lazy Ike Rod Rack Wall Mount Fishing Pole Holder. Um... It was just at a local thrift store on half price day, so I paid a couple dollars. We took an $18 offer on it. Um, I don't think that there was really any comps that I could... I didn't research it deeply, but um, just kind of handed it over. Mr. Pishposh got it listed, and it sold within a week or so, I want to say. It sold pretty quickly. This is a, a set of spoons by Gorham that I found at our clearance center. So a lot of times the flatware there is just junk. You know, it's, you're, you dig around, you might find one of this, one of that. Um, but they were putting some, some things out and a lot of times they have like carts that are sitting there with stuff that they're putting out and then they, you know, they let people just dig into it because it's less stuff for them to have to put out on the shelves. And so I saw these spoons in a bag and so I grabbed them. Because, you know, Gorham is not a bad flatware brand, and they were new. They had never been used. And so this set of five teaspoons sold for $50. Next up is... Dun, 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 this is our amazing item that sold. Um, it did not sell for $1,249.99. We took an offer, received an offer for $900, and we took it. So, people, I want you to understand that this item was broken. This Sony Walkman did not even work. We listed it for parts or for not working. We listed it non-functional. It had a new battery, no power supply. So it could possibly have worked with a power supply, had a metal body. So we talked about it in the other video. You want to look up any Sony Walkmans. Like you just, the plastic ones are usually not as valuable as the metal body ones. Um, this one, this particular model, DD Quartz, it's a WM DD9, for some reason is very sought after. Now working... In working condition, they're listed at like in the $2,000, $3,000 range. Um, and we noticed when searching comps that the for parts or not working ones were actually selling better, selling faster. 
in anywhere from like 600 to 900 to a little bit more. Um, we paid $5 at our ongoing estate sale. Um, so it, I want to say how many days did it take? Let's say a week. It took maybe less than a week. I don't even remember if we got, I think we got one offer like right after we listed it, maybe for like 500 or something like that. And so we just decided to, I think we countered or something, but we didn't, we decided not to take that first offer. And then I remember it was a Monday morning. I wasn't home. I looked down at my phone and I was like, there was an offer for 900. And I was like, Mr. Pishbosh, you're going to take that offer, right? Because that was kind of on the, you know, the high end of, of what the, broken ones were selling for. Now the other part of it was that the cosmetically ours was in really good condition and it had the case. So that did add value to it as well. Um, so yeah, it's been delivered. We haven't heard anything yay or nay from the buyer. So it made it there. Okay. And, um, you know, hopefully it's just stays sold <laughs> is all I can say. It's been a few, couple of weeks now already. So check the Walkmans that you find. Even some of the plastic ones could, might sell for $30, $40, $50, things like that. And if you can find new old stock, like new in the package, that can be really good money. Next up was a sewing pattern. And I actually sold a sewing pattern on eBay, which is kind of interesting. $12.99 for this Vogue uh, 7853. It was just a blouse pattern and it was plus size. Then we sold a hat. This hat sold for the $18.99. And Snappies is just, I don't, I don't know. I thought it was just a local store here in Montana. Um, that's what, you know, when I first, when I bought the hat, I was like, eh, why am I buying this hat? It's just a local, but it was camo, everything like that. And the person who bought it did not live in Montana. So maybe Snappies was like their nickname or something like that. <laughs> okay. Here's another really good sale. I was kind of crazy because I think it was the same day as the $900 Walkman we sold this Polo Ralph Lauren wool cardigan sweater that I had picked up at Goodwill for like $6 and it sold on offer for $120. So if you look, we did get a message from the buyer first. And if you look at the label, Polo by Ralph Lauren made in Hong Kong. Okay. So that's a vintage label. It's a vintage, probably eighties, nineties, 80s most likely um, uh, piece of Polo Ralph Lauren. Now the and it was 100% wool, which was also important. Now um, he messaged and was just kind of like I said. I think he was fairly new to buying vintage Polo Ralph Lauren, and he was confirming, you know, that Hong Kong meant vintage. And I said that's how I always understood it. That's what he understood. Um, the condition was just really nice, right? And it was very classic looking. And so I don't think there were any issues on it. Just a nice looking cardigan. So like I said, that sold for $120. And a knife. Let's see, Mr. Pish Posh sold this knife for $24.99. Um, I vaguely remember him picking up some knives recently. I think this was one of them. I think just a local thrift store. It's possible it was the bins as well. I don't always see everything. I think we were together, but I didn't, I don't always see every, when it's the bins. I don't always see everything that comes home. I'm assuming this power station battery charger was a personal item that he was selling and that sold for $18. Now this is kind of fun. I, we picked this up on a, um, road trip last, has it been a year already? Yeah, probably. Cause I think I bought it in Washington and that was a year, almost a year ago. And I know this hasn't been listed for a year, but, um, I, 
I just picked it up because it was really cool. It's pewter with brass handles, brass foot. And if you notice, we called it a pipkin and saucer. And we do have a reason for that. We do, um, I didn't just know to call it a pipkin. <laughs> So I was doing research, and I'll put up a picture of the vintage ad that I found. And, you know, this, I think the ad's like from the 90s is when this series came out. So it was Oneida Pewter and Brass. They had a whole kind of um, colonial set, colonial looking set that, that came out with candlesticks and coffee pots and stuff like that. So if you look at this next picture, this is an up close of the ad, and right on top you can see J is a pipkin and plate. So that's what, why we called it that. Now when I looked up what a pipkin was, uh, Google tells me it's a small earthenware or metal pot usually with a horizontal handle. So Oneida knew what they were talking about. We just sold that for $22.00. I believe, yeah, $22. So, you know, I'm sure I overpaid for this. I It was in a Washington Goodwill that was not super cheap, but I just thought it was really cool and ended up buying it. So who knows? I probably broke even. <laughs> no, I'm sure I made a few bucks on that, but you learn something new. Now I know the word Pipkin. Okay, this is one of our oldest listings. Not necessarily on eBay. It's been on Etsy for a while. Um, we had a couple of these in different colors. I think we sold one in the past. And it is... I don't think it was ever used. We had the original packaging, but the packaging was so in such bad shape that I think we just took them out. And it sold for $29.99. Just kind of a vintage radio. Took for Took a long time. The hammer. So if you remember the hammer also from that video, um, I think with Mr. Pishposh of our finds that day, we got this at that ongoing estate sale the same day we got the uh, Walkman. And it was a Tim Allen hammer. And so, uh, I don't know, in that video we talk about what we paid for it. I don't think it was that much. Let's say five, six, seven, something like that. And it sold for $70. Sold another, well, sold this camera. Uh, he he listed it at, as as is. So I'm sure there was some other kind of condition issue, possibly. Let's see. Well, he just says good overall physical, functional, minor, moderate. See photos for detail. Basic functions like flash were tested. Camera's not been fully tested. So he listed it as is because it was not fully tested, I guess, with film. Um, but we did just put it as used, not like for parts. So um, that sold for $39.99. And I think we've sold one of those before. I sold some fabric. I was so excited. This sold for about $80. Um, I think I had, they used a coupon that I had going, but this fabric from my fabric videos, this mid-century fabric, I had about a little over four yards of it and I bought it at an antique mall and I paid up a little bit for it. I think like $24 or something like that, but, um, I sold it for about 80. So that makes me happy. It was really cool. It had like the copper parts were metallic looking. Very MCM. And that was it for eBay for that week, I believe. Moving over to Posh. A set of curlers. You know, for a while there we sold curlers like really quickly with, with rollers or like hot rollers, it really depends on the brand and the, you know, I wouldn't like $20. This is like, whatever it's on Poshmark. You just throw it in a box. It's fine. Um, but anything that wasn't worth a ton and needed cleaning, forget it. We wouldn't do it. So I think we just picked these up at the clearance center and they took a little while to sell the first 
sets we had been finding and listing sold a lot faster. So it really does depend on the model and, and things like that. I don't pick up every set I see. Not a chance. Alaskan Hard Gear. This is a, a company, or this is a line of clothing by Duluth Trading Company. And here's the label, Alaskan Hard Gear, Duluth Trading Company. This is just kind of bread and butter type of thing. It was a 2XL. It was gingham. Um, sold it for $25 on Posh. I don't pick up a ton of Duluth. It's very bread and butter, so I would have to get it kind of cheap in order to profit from it. Um, this was a straw hat picked up at our clearance center. It's by Helen Kaminsky, Australia. Interestingly, someone did pay more on eBay for this, but um, they they canceled like that later that day. Like they they bought it for like eighty dollars or something. And then they read the description and the measurements and said, oh, that's not going to work for me. And so they asked to cancel. So then a little while later, we got an offer on Poshmark for $40. And considering we got the hat at the Bins Clearance Center, we went ahead and took that offer. And then last on Posh was this Travis Matthew. It was long sleeved shirt. Um, again, it's a kind of a bread and butter golf Golf shirt brand. Travis Matthew. Couple things on Etsy. This was on Mr. Pishposh's shop. Um, he's he's more into looking at glassware than I am. So he took the time to look through all the glass at a thrift store and bought this. It was signed right down here. You can kind of see it. Quant Quantro. Um, just one martini glass. And he sold it for $25 on Etsy. And then we sold this um, jewelry box uh, with this nautical type of theme. And it was like faux leather, faux wood on the top. And let me see if the bottom... Okay, so the bottom, there is a mark here. And I had told... Let's see, I had... Yeah, made by Swank. So you couldn't read the mark on the bottom anymore, but... Um, I rec I found it like through Google Lens and through other jewelry boxes and Swank, you know, who makes made like tie clips and tie and cufflinks and things like that, um, made this jewelry box as well. We seem to do pretty well with men's style jewelry boxes, whether it's men who buy them or not. Um, but anything kind of a little bit more masculine looking seems to do okay for us. $25. Ruby Lane, that week they were having a spotlight sale, they call it, where they you can include items in the sale. It was 25% off. So I tried to clear a few things out. And so I put some stuff in the sale. And uh, during this week I sold, I think, yeah, I think it was the full week. So anyway, this sold for $19. It's a little cracker tray kind of thing by Arthur Court. So if you, Arthur Court can be a bolo if you look up, you know, some of the pieces that are a little more sought after than others, um, aluminum wear type thing. But this just sold for $19 on, in the sale. This brooch sold for $21 in the sale. It was unsigned. It had no maker, but I just bought it based on style of the Starburst, um, very kind of atomic mid-century looking with this faux pearl center and so I felt $21 was not bad for an unsigned brooch. This pair or this pair this set of socks sold for $30 and they're when I first grabbed the package I just love new old stock I've talked about that before um it's, they sold them at Kmart and it was just funny because looking at the package I thought they were girl socks and I think I picked them up at an estate sale last year. Came across them recently. I was like, eh, I'll just throw them on Ruby Lane. And as I was listing, I was like, wait a minute. These are misses, right? There's no picture of a woman on the front. There's just the girl. So I didn't even read like the sizing or anything. And then it says at the top, it's misses. So I'm sure they just use the same packaging for the girl socks as well. 
$30 for that pair of socks. And the last thing for the week was this brooch, again, in the sale. It's just a Sarah Coventry a flower brooch. It's called Illusion, and it sold for $11. I think I had it originally at, like, 15 or something like that. But just happy to kind of move a few things through. So it wasn't, like, the most prolific. Is that the right word that I want? The most uh, number of items sold in volume for a week, but that $900 sale plus the $120 sale that really, um, you know, helped the bottom line for that week. Um, the weeks after that were a little bit slow, but we were going, um, I don't know. It's just spring. <laughs> it's just been kind of slow. We had a good weekend this past weekend. Um, so I think we're visible again, this is like is that we joke around about eBay, you know, hiding us for a while, but we were visible, we're visible again for now. So we had some solid sales this weekend, but it had been slowish kind of before that, but that could be us too. You know, we're Mr. Pishposh was doing some work, so we were listing, but just not the hardcore listing that we do sometimes. So as always, leave me a comment down below about your best find, your best sale of the week. Um, it doesn't have to be the same week that I've been talking about. It can be this recent week. And anything cool that you found or your best sale or just in general how sales have been going for you. I always like reading your comments. So thank you guys so much and we'll see you later on this week.